Live. Brought to you by Kellogg's. Kellogg's Cereal. The best to you each morning. From Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now, live from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. We've been having a lot of laughs backstage, so I'm not quite sure I can make this introduction properly. But the young man who's been making us laugh is going to be making people laugh down in Puerto Rico as of March 2nd at the Carrie V. Hilton Hotel. And here he is now, Buddy Hackett. currently appearing in Billy Wilder's hilarious comedy where she is the female star. The name of the picture, one, two, three. The name of the lady, the glorious Arlene Francis. And now while our anchor man Bennett Cerf and his wife are enjoying the, I hope, sunny climate in Palm Springs with Mrs. Morse Hart, I have my own particular anchor man with me tonight, Martin Gable. Now, a brilliant newsman, a master of the polysyllable, and our leader, John Daly. <laughs> And proud it is I am to lead such a distinguished company. Mr. Hackett, it's nice to have you back with us again. Thank you. Nice to be here. It's a pleasant <laughs> place to hang out, all right. <coughs> Especially on a Sunday night when it looks like a snowstorm's coming. Yeah. Yes, I oh. think so, too. <laughs> I don't know. If we have some interesting people for you all to meet and some very interesting occupations that they brought to the theater with them for you to play with later on. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the program and we'll meet our first challenger and now let's meet our first contestant will you enter and sign in please mr x how do you do sir it's nice see to see you. you needless to say the panel i'm sure knows already that you are mr x because we feel that some element or character with respect to your name, might give some hint, and we don't want to do that. But you can tell us where you're from, if you will. Uh, I'm from New York. You're from New York. Yes. Nice to have you with us. May I present the panel, Mr. X? Now, will you join me over here, please? You know how we keep score on what's yes. my line? Yes. And that event must let the people in the theater and the people in home know exactly what your line is. We can tell you that Mr. X is salaried and deals in a service. And we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, Mr. X, do you work indoors? Uh, hardly. Can you ever do your work in any city other than New York? Yes. Uh, is it probable that you would? Not, no. No. No, not as now. One down and nine to go, Mr. Hack. <coughs> well, when you call yourself Mr. Rex, you probably have another name. <laughs> do you? And if we knew that other name, would it not help us to know what you do? Probably. Okay, what's your name? <coughs> <coughs> uh, this service that you render, does it take place in a specific building? No. Two down at eight to go, Miss Frank. Huh. Mr. X, is your work of a serious nature? I would say yes. Do you work for any branch of the government? Yes. Would it be the federal government? No. That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Gable. Is it the city government? Yes. Uh, do you have anything to do directly or indirectly with the mayor? 
directly or indirectly. Well, you have to have it indirectly. If you yes, indirectly. Yes. I, I, I gave myself a wide scope there, John. Yes. yes. I'm an old hand at this game. <laughs> uh, do you work for a specific department? Yes. Uh, has it anything to do with the elimination of crime? No. That four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Does it have anything to do with the elimination of traffic jams? Yes. Are you Mr. Barnes? Yes. <laughs> Congratulations, Dorothy, but I must say, Martin, I, I was afraid the minute you got it isolated to New York City that somebody would think of our new traffic commissioner. Yeah. Mr. John, the terrible thing is, if you'll excuse me, I was on a program the other night, and Mr. Barnes was being interviewed before me, but his back was to the control room where I was all evening. <laughs> and so I eliminated Mr. Barnes. Well, was that was one of the things that we were taking a chance on tonight, and it was good fun to watch you and recognize that you hadn't any idea. Of, oh, Not a clue. Oh, May I ask well, Mr. Mr. Barnes a question? Did. Yes, Mr. Hackett. I understand that you cleared up most of the traffic in Baltimore, Maryland, but there was a rumor to the effect that in one day, 385,000 cars disappeared in Chesapeake Bay. Is that <laughs> we, made, uh, we made all the streets one way outbound on Right off the top. Right off the top. That, of course, would be a way to solve it. But seriously, Mr. Barnes, I suppose your work is as critical to the future of our great cities as any work that's being done today. Uh, what do you consider the, the major traffic problem, not only of New York City, but of, of all of our major cities or any good-sized city? Well, I think the major problem and the basis for most all other problems is probably parking. If you could get all the parking off the streets, you could do a tremendous job of just moving people and vehicles and so on. But with our streets so largely occupied as parking lots, it's sometimes difficult, and particularly I've discovered in New York, to move any cars. Well, do you think it's possible in New York, as it's now constituted, to find enough parking room for this, to get the cars off? Well, not uh, on the street, certainly. Uh, I think that a great deal can be done that way. I sometimes wonder why people in New York own automobiles if they don't need them in their business. But uh, uh, certainly a great deal of off-street parking uh, not only can be created, but will have to be created, because otherwise we just can't use these streets to move traffic. Well, as a resident of <coughs> New York City, needless to say, I wish you all kinds of success in your new assignment. You were appointed recently, if I remember, January 15th of January. 15th of yes. January. Because I think you carry one load, which I'm sure uh, I don't have to identify. You have, what, about eight and a half million experts helping you out every day? Well, no problem. in New York, and since uh, about 20 million people come to New York annually, they too help. So you've got 20 million experts yes. to help you. I'm sorry for you, Mr. Barnes, but Thank thanks you. very much for being our guest. Much success in your Thank new assignment. Thank you very much. Too. Good beginning, panel. Let's see what we can do with the second contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Bertha Zima, right? Is it Miss or Mrs. Zima? Mrs. And where are you from, Mrs. Zima? Cabot, Pennsylvania. Cabot? Right. Cabot, Pennsylvania. Well, may I present the panel, Mrs. Zima? Mm -hmm. Can you join me over here? Do you know how we keep score, Mrs. Zima? All right, we'll let the audience at home and the audience in the theater know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel, we can tell you that Mrs. Zima is salaried and deals in a product. And let's begin the general questioning with... Um, Martin Gay. Mrs. Zima, could I use your product? Yes. Would it be more suitable for me than for my wife? No. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, would it be suitable for his wife? Yes. Um, hmm. Would it be worn? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Hackett. Is this a product that would have changed the appearance of the user? No. <laughs> Three thousand seven to go, Miss Francis. Is it a product that would be found in the home? Yes. Would it be found uh, in one room more than another in the house? 
Yes. Is it a product that is consumed? Yes. Uh, is it consumed by the individual? Yes. It is, uh, is it something either edible or liquid? Yes. Uh, is it a, is it, is it solid? Yes. Uh, would one buy it in a grocery store? Yes. Is it packaged when you buy it? Yes. Does it come in a, um, uh... Can I have just a small yes. conference? John has seen some loose, obviously. <laughs> Arlene, the only thing that, that uh, I would want to say is while they are packaged, uh, usually I would think, I'm not an expert on this, it still would be possible to buy them uh, the in pound. bulk here yeah, by the pound. Mm -hmm. uh, is this uh, a product that uh, grows? Yes. Is it in the fruit or vegetable kingdom? Yes. Uh, is it dried when you buy it? as opposed to wet. <laughs> Sometimes. Uh, is it anything that grows on trees? No. no. Four dollars and six Money I was thinking of. <laughs> Mr. Gable? You can see what a problem I'd have to try to lie to my wife. <laughs> yes. I, <laughs> does it grow on the ground? Yes. Yeah. Uh, is it... When it's packaged, does it come in groups of, say, hundreds, like nuts, or scores? Martin, it would be hard to say. I would say when it's packaged, I think you could buy it in substantial bulk, or you could buy what would be, say, a reasonable amount for the use of an average household. Let's put it that way. Is it a kind of nut? No. No, they're all on the panel tonight. But you That's are. five down, <laughs> and five to go, Mr. Gal. Mrs. Beamer, uh, is this particular product ever cooked? Yes. Is it ever cooked after it gets to the home? Yes. In other words, you haven't done everything possible to it. No. Trouble with me, I don't know what grows above ground and what grows <laughs> underground. Um, well, it's not a nut. Would you call it a vegetable rather than a fruit? Yes. Uh, is it the kind of a vegetable that grows in the ground with its face in the ground like a turnip? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Small conference. Uh, like an onion. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. No, because it's dry. Dorothy, what we're, we're trying very hard not to mislead you here. I know, John. Uh, when you asked if it grew in the ground, were you asking the question with respect to its entire natural growth period? <laughs> Never occurred to oh, you, John, this, Dorothy. She's a city girl. <laughs> oh, are you trying to be funny, John? Um, well, I am talking what... about. Well, let us take a carrot, for instance. Yeah. Um, I know people eat both ends of the carrot, but what we usually can, if you go into a restaurant and you order carrots, what you get is the part that grows in the ground. If I'm not wrong, right? Under the ground. If you're not wrong, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, at the period when it is picked, at it, I believe what is called the peak of oh. ripeness, its face is in the ground. At the peak of ripeness? Yes. <laughs> what have I just found out? But you're going to get a no, I think. But you mean in the ground, covered over by earth? Or partially covered. Or almost entirely? Partially. No, I can't win this one. Well, let's say that uh, partially, some part of it we would... Uh, Concede is, is in the ground, right? <laughs> well, the roots are always in the ground. Is it something more than roots that are in the ground? Something more than roots in yes. the ground when it's at the full peak, under the earth, you're That's speaking right. of. Now. That'll make it six <laughs> down and four to go, I hope. <laughs> Mr. Hackett, I'm going to give you one more minute. Is this grown indoors? No. <laughs> I didn't get many questions. <clears throat> well, now, wait a minute. We've got to start. <laughs> Your question is, is it grown indoors? Yes. I yes. think we would have here to say, certainly in a manner of speaking. Certainly in a manner of speaking. <laughs> what manner? Uh, is this uh, more a light-colored vegetable than a dark? <laughs> yeah. Is it closer to white than to yellow? <laughs> yeah. Is it mushrooms? <laughs> Oh, 
Well, the reason I asked indoors is because most mushrooms are grown indoors in what is called mushroom cellars. Well, because, you're absolutely right, buddy. In uh, this case... Mushrooms are not phototropic, you see. Are not phototropic? No. Oh, that's right. But they're these, not even photographic. They're not even... No. <laughs> Actually, these are grown in a cave. And that's why I had to say indoors in a manner of speaking. Oh, yeah. In old limestone caves, is that it? Right. The Butler County... Mushroom Farm. Mushroom Farm. And you've now got the product. Now, what does Mrs. Zima have to do with it? What she has to do with the product? Yeah. She eats them all day long. <laughs> eats mushrooms. I've got to flip all the cards and tell you, because she I don't think... She sorts them, She picks them. Picks She's them. a mushroom picker. Oh. She's been doing it for three years and works in these limestone caves where they, they bring the... But the champion mushroom the spores meat. up and they're in a box and stuff and they grow and then right. you take them out and then Buddy Heck it eats them. Right. Uh, right, uh, right. Right. Well, thank you very much. You've been a most interesting guest, and it is a vegetable. It's a fungus, right? But it's, yeah. called, it's a part of the, of the vegetable family. So there you are. And thank you for bringing your mushrooms to us. <laughs> we'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. With your permission, I would like to take perhaps no more than 10 seconds to say something very important, but it, I think, all adds up to one sentence. Have a heart. You yourself, please, join the 1962 Heart Fund, the campaign that is now underway to help conquer heart disease. Remember that the more we'll live, the more you give. So you have a heart, too, while the campaign is on and, and help out. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which my friends on the panel is you know, a blindfolded. The blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, yes good. Yes. Will you enter Mystery Challenger and sign in, please? Panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning, one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise. And let's begin with um, Arlene Francis. Might one find your name uh, in the entertainment pages of the New York papers this very day? I can hear. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Mr. Gable? Uh, you're male, of course. Yeah. Miss Kilgallen? Um, are you both, are, are you, let us say, are you a screen and television actor? That's it. Mr. Hackett? Are you a leading man type actor? Yeah, but I ain't Lenny Bruce. Miss Francis? Oh, I, I, shall I disqualify myself? I think I know who it is, and I'd like him to stay on forever. Well, uh, you can, you can pass once, if you'd like to, just to see what was going to happen, if you I really think, think you know. I think I, is it somebody that I know in a dear, homey kind of way? Yes, you're digging, baby. You Mr. bet, I always have. Mr. Gable? I know that voice. Uh, I'm glad you know my <laughs> wife so well. <laughs> That's a good clue, Martin. <laughs> um, uh, do I know you too in a dear homie kind of way? <laughs> you betcha. This Phil Gallon? <gasps> oh, golly, I don't think I know him in a dear homie kind of way, but if it's who I think I'd like to. Um, <laughs> are you in the children's hour? <laughs> nah. Mr. Hackett? Uh, uh, are you a boy that weighs under 160 pounds? <laughs> yeah. Ms. Francis? What'll I do now, ask John? Ask a question yes, that will John. help you. Oh, I'll ask a question that'll help you. All right. Um, have I worked with you in one of the art forms? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Gable? I know. Marty, how many men have I worked with that I feel homey about? 
<laughs> you know, following my wife's career is a full-time job in itself. <laughs> I agree to that, Martin. I These passed. are all very valuable clues I'm getting here. Mr. Gallon? <laughs> but I think I know who it is. He passed, Dorothy. Oh, Martin passed too? Yeah. Do I know you at all? Have you met uh, Miss Kilgallen? No. That makes it one dollar nine to go, Mr. Hackett. You will. I think I know who he is. I who? take a wild guess that is George Hamilton. That's two dollar <laughs> next to go. <laughs> well, it is one of the best young actors of today. He has just returned from India where he did a picture. He is in the middle of doing a picture, Nine Days to Rabba. He just had a baby, not single-handed. Oh. And I was in a picture with him called One, Two, Three, oh. in which he was a very endearing performer, and his name is Horst oh. Buchholz. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Actually, Arlene covered all the important ground. He, he, yeah. he is one of... of uh, I wanted you Arlene, to laugh. You know, to find out the last minute. Your voice, as soon as you spoke. I'm oh, sorry, gave it away. We were together too long. Uh, Pardon oh. me, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> but Billy well, Wilder was there, too. This is all of particular interest to all of us, because if you will remember last summer, Arlene was to be away for a long period because she was going to Germany, where in part uh, she was going to work on the picture, one, two, three, with which she stars with uh, Mr. Buchholz. And now you, you're going to London, aren't you, to complete... Yes, I'm on my way to London to complete uh, Nine Hours to Rama. That's one of Bennett's Surf's books. I think it's wonderful to have somebody here doing one of Bennett's books when he's not here. That it's suits me fine. It's a marvelous book. Yeah, it's we, we got it back it's a story copy. about uh, Gandhi's assassination. Gandhi's yes, assassination. assassination, yes. Well, Mr. Buchholz, may I thank you for being our guest. Thank, thank you very much. Nice to have you with us and to meet Arlene's friend. It's good yes. to see you. <laughs> We'll be back after this word from our heartedly. Mr. Hackett, it's been nice to have you back with us Thanks again. Thank you very much. And <laughs> hope we see you again soon. He's going down to have a tough time, and you're going to San Juan, Puerto Rico. In the suffer in, in the Caribbean Hilton and all that snow and everything. Uh -huh. well, have a real good time, and Miss Dorothy Kilgallen, good night. Good night, John. I just want to give you a rough idea of this one. Uh, he guessed George Hamilton because he thought he was under 160 pounds. And I said, well, what about, it could have been Tony Perkins. He's under 60, 160 pounds. And he said, oh, yes, he ran away and from home and joined a dart game. A dart game? <laughs> joined a what? He a joined dart a dart game. game. A dart game? You <laughs> throw him or does he throw he's them? He's such a little boy. Because he's so thin. All right. <laughs> I thought it was terribly funny. I thought it was hilarious, else I never would have said it. <laughs> you want to do anything of your own now? <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> Good night, Dorothy. Good night, John. Good night, buddy. Come Good again. Good night. Thank you. Good, Good night, night buddy, dear. Good night, Bennett. I hope you're having a very, very happy holiday, and I expect you'll be coming back soon, won't he? Yep, Bennett will be back next time we're on the air. Good. Good we'll night. see you next Sunday then, Bennett. Uh, Good night for now, Martin. For a moment, darling, yes. I'd like to say to our audience, John, that I got a lot of letters this week commiserating with me because Arlene was so stern with me for uh, uh, noticing the figure of the girl who rode the bicycle last week. So I'd like to explain that it's all in fun and uh, <laughs> not to take it so seriously. Oh, all right. That's what Bye. he says. Good night, Martin. <laughs> and good night, Bennett, wherever you are. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us on What's My Line. What's My Line is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Todman. This is Johnny Olson speaking.